Hiya folks. Last week, I guess it was last week, I made a little meme. I don't know if this is a meme because it's just words on a, a pale brownish, what does it call that, beige screen. First, learn not to worry about things that you can't do anything about. Second, learn that there's nothing you can do anything about. It's just something I came up with spontaneously, and I, I thought, oh, that's kind of good. And I put it out there, and a lot of people liked it, and then other people got upset about it. And somebody uh, on, I put it on Twitter, and somebody got really angry about it, somebody in Japan. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about this idea again, because as I saw that people were like, uh, their heads exploding about this idea, I thought maybe there's a different way to explain this, and maybe this one will work. <laughs> we'll see. So, as I've said uh, a few times uh, recently, I've been thinking a lot about this idea of, of uh, what do we call it, um, uh, determinism and free will. And in Buddhism, the debate about determinism and free will doesn't really exist as such, but there is a very similar debate which has similar implications, and it's the debate about whether a person of great practice is free from cause and effect. And you can find two essays about this in Shobogenzo Book 4, and you can find my versions of those two essays about this in my book, uh, It Came From Beyond Zen. Uh, I, I went through them both, and I was just looking at them now, both Dogen's versions and my versions, and, and <laughs> unusual for me, I was not completely uh, disgusted by my own ver. I usually get disgusted by my own writings very quickly after I finish them and go, ah, I wish I had never written that. But this is just my own overreaction. Actually, I think if when I'm when cooler heads prevail among me and me, I I like most of what I've written. So don't worry about that. But uh, sometimes I look at it and go, Ugh. anyway, I didn't think Ugh, this time. I thought, oh, that's all right. Uh, but that's the way the debate is usually framed. Now, ooh, it took me a while to see the connection between the free will determinism thing and the uh, cause and effect and free from cause and effect thing. Uh, determinism, determinism has it that everything that you, is, at least this is the way I understand determinism, that everything you will do is completely determined from the long past and there's nothing you can do, you have no, no free will at all, uh, whatever's going to happen is going to happen, whatever happened in the past has happened and you're just kind of along for the ride. I think this is the version that people like Sam Harris uh, champion and uh, lots of people try to get me into Sam Harris but I have to tell you I am not a fan <laughs> sorry Sam Harris you'll probably never have me on your podcast you, you wouldn't have me on your podcast anyway because you wouldn't know what to do with me but anyway uh, I could I could probably sell a lot more books if I was on Sam Harris's podcast but anyway I'll never be on it because I, I don't I think he's not that smart but his version of, of determinism is absolute <coughs> everything is determined uh, then there's the free will that says, well, you know, you have all, all sorts of opportunities and you, you can do anything you want. And Americans especially are very fond of that, but people all over the world are fond of that idea that, uh, that you have this amazing uh, world of total free choice of anything you want to do, you can do, and it's great, and you can change the world and all that stuff, all that wonderful stuff. Now, lately, I've kind of fallen into the idea of a, a sort of determinism light, as you might call it, but is much more informed by the Buddhist debate over cause and effect and free and um, uh, freedom from cause and effect, right? Not free will. I've almost said free will. So um, this idea has it that cause and effect are are going to determine how your future plays out. So I anytime you do something uh, against the rule of the universe, as Nishijima Roshi would put it, immoral, unethical, uh, then that's going to come back to bite you. And anytime you do something ethical, that's going to come back to pat you on the head or something like that. You know, that's the very simplistic version of this. And there's this idea uh, around making the rounds uh, in India and, and uh, later on in China at uh, the time of, of uh, the great Buddhist writings that a person who had enlightenment, you know, a person of great practice, and enlightenment is probably a you know, close enough metaphor or close enough similar idea to that, was free from cause and effect. So, so his past actions didn't affect him, and so he could do anything he wanted. He had complete freedom, and other people 
who didn't have uh, such great effect were bound by uh, cause and effect. So those people lived in determinism, and the uh, people who uh, who uh, had great enlightenment were who had free will. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> My version light of this that I've been uh, putting out there is uh, informed by what I learned from Nishim Roshi and what I've read in Dogen, which is that you you have a limited uh, ability to be free because you're you're so determined by your your past and not by just your past by your own society's past by everything that's come before you uh, you're a product of a time and a place you think you have an infinite number of choices but really an infinite number of choices are not even going to occur to you so you might be able to choose, as uh, the quote I gave you from uh, Krishnamurti last week, between uh, buying a red cloth and buying a blue cloth, but you, your, your choices are, are, are limited to, to a very small scope because so much has already gone on. You think you have unlimited choices, but that's not true. You, you, don't, you only have a very small range of choices. Now, that's what I believe. But I also see that the reason Buddhism stresses ethics so much is because those little choices can have huge ramifications. And the way that I spent six minutes trying to come around to what I wanted to say, but the, the way I found or the way I thought of the other day to explain this is uh, the butterfly effect. And the butterfly effect in chaos theory I wrote it down for you, so let's look at what I wrote down. Oh. <laughs> it's not very good. But it says that uh, small actions can have big effects, and it, it comes from the idea that uh, when people studying weather systems, weather is very unpredictable. Here in ca Southern California, the weather is actually pretty predictable, but it's one of the few places in the world where it is. Where I grew up in Ohio, uh, the famous uh, weatherman, the late, much lamented Dick Goddard, had a book called uh, Five Inches of Partly Cloudy, uh, his little, little, little autobiography uh, that he wrote. Um, because it's, it's about whether people can never get it exactly right. Five, you know, you predict partly cloudy weather and you get five inches of snow. So that because the, the weather is so unpredictable, the idea is that even a butterfly flapping its wings in Brazil can cause a typhoon in uh, East Asia somewhere. And it's part of the chaos theory that little little things can have great effects, and it's unpredictable how it how it might go in the world of human effects. It's pretty easy to envision how the butterfly effect works, and here's a slightly cartoonish example that I came up with. Say you're having a bad day, and you go to the grocery store, and the 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 woman at the checkout line makes a small mistake and you just you know let her have it and she's been having a bad day so she gives it back to you and the manager comes along and hears this and reprimands her and, and uh, makes her uh, you know I don't know maybe fires her maybe or uh, gives her a bad time she goes home takes that out on her husband her husband is kind of like you know one of these timid guys so he doesn't he doesn't fight back but he takes it out on his kid his kid goes to school and takes it out on the the kid that everybody takes everything out on and then later that kid because of the abuse he's had grows up and becomes a serial killer <laughs> so so you're uh, being snippy with the grocery store clerk uh, causes a serial killer now that's, like I say, a kind of a cartoonish example. There's probably a lot more steps between yelling at the grocery store clerk and the, and the um, what did I say, serial killer. But there's a connection. And I think any sort of intelligent person could agree that, that there is a connection. So that means we don't have a whole lot of choices in our lives, but the choices that we make, we better be really careful with them. And this is why I think Buddhism uh, is, uh, is so insistent upon ethics. You know, I, I gave that whole thing a couple months ago about the, uh, the ten precepts and the ethical, you know, the sevenfold chain of, uh, what is it called? No, no, sorry, the eightfold path. <laughs> God, <laughs> I'm so terrible. The eightfold path, uh, all are ethical systems that all Buddhists agree on, and it's really, really important, even though it's this non-dualistic philosophy that, that has it, that, that everything sort of flows. Now, if we want to carry the butterfly effect a little further, you know, 
apparently meteorologists and people who study the weather will say that really uh, one butterfly flapping its wings probably can't cause a typhoon. That's probably an exaggeration. But if we, if we transfer that into the human world, I think what we've got is seven billion butterflies all flapping like crazy, trying to flap as hard as they can. And this, of course, has an effect, which is the, the chaos that we always see constantly in the, the world of human affairs. Now, if one butterfly can cause a typhoon, which, you know, maybe it can, or maybe two or three or, or a thousand butterflies might be able to cause a typhoon, think about us, you know, the, you and me, the people who are working on this Buddhist thing, who in the metaphor that I'm stretching all the way to breaking point right now, uh, choose to be butterflies who exempt ourselves from flapping all the time. We, we're, we're butterflies who are trying to, you know, keep our wings still and only flap them when we need to. Uh, that also has a large cumulative effect and that is why just one person trying to do the right thing in this moment not trying to change the world and and you know make the whole thing great and wonderful you know just uh, help mom clean the gutters as I said one time you know you're not out trying to make the you know the world a better place for every cause you know the causes keep changing every time I look at Twitter there's a new cause that everybody's like oh we gotta stop this thing you know and then and then uh, two days later, it's, oh, we got to stop this other thing, and everybody's going to do it, and it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's nutty is what it is. But a better strategy, I think, is to look at the exact thing that appears in your life that you can do something about, like this plant that just appeared on the little table that I use. You know, maybe I can do something good for this plant. You know, it actually looks like somebody already gave it water. So I don't need to do that. But, you know, you come across something that you can do a little bit of good in the life of that person or that thing or whatever it is, you know, pick up a piece of trash on the sidewalk. You know, uh, don't snip at the grocery store clerk even though you feel like, like uh, she made a big mistake. That kind of thing can have a huge cumulative effect too. So that's why we are always trying to stick with doing the right thing even when doing the right thing might seem like it doesn't matter that much. Like, does it matter that much if I snap at the grocery store clerk or not, you know? Uh, it might matter a lot. So be careful. That's, that's my uh, thing. You have tremendous power but not much choice. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it works for you. Uh, I, I think it's true, and it's something that has been a cornerstone of how I live my life for the past, you know, uh, several decades. So, and I'm not always great at it, but, uh, but I try, and I think we all need to try. And that's the message for today. That's my sermon for the day. If you want to support me making more sermons like this, you can send a donation to the URL that you are seeing on the screen. That will take you to my PayPal and Patreon links. Those are my only ways of making a living. Uh, so I really appreciate those of you who support me, but if you're having financial trouble, don't support me. Support something else. Support yourself. You don't need to worry about me, but the reason you don't need to worry about me is because other people are contributing, and I really thank those people, uh, and that's how I keep going. Ziggy is, by the way, uh, he's coming out of the house now. Uh, ever since a couple of days ago, he came out. But just before I made this video, he was out running around for a while, and he went back in before I made this video. So I don't know if I'll be able to get a cameo of him in or not. I'll see what I can do. And if you keep watching, you might see a cameo of him. Uh, but we'll see. Have a good time all the time. See you later. Bye. You don't like the, you don't like the computer? Say hi to the folks in, in TV land. What are you doing, Ziggy?